full moon sunset off the front of the house. My goal is honey and full beehives. But first, you have to go from the bare wood to painted boxes. I have a mentor who's helping me, but that knows way, way more. So it's actually his hives he's keeping out here so I can practice first. These three I'm painting right now are mine. I'm going to be putting in the back there. So let's take a look and see how you can uh, get up some beehives. Super simple. I'm just using exterior satin white, pure white. And I'll show you what I was told and saw some of the other guys in the bee club. The girls are real delicate when they're painting around the corners and where the uh, dovetail seams are. So learning from everybody and we'll see where it takes us toothpaste style in here because this is where you're going to get a lot of your moisture damage and moisture leakage in here so it's better to really try to squeeze that in the cracks incredible thick in there and a look at no nail framing for barns east tennessee countryside Investors could see some of the strongest price action in gold this year, according to Wells Fargo, which sees signs of a developing rally. The driver behind this new spark in prices is diminishing supply growth, and it could take gold to $2,200 an ounce. Gold supplies have flipped from excessive to deficient, and such times in the past have sparked some of gold's strongest price rallies. And many believe we're on the eve of a new commodity bull super cycle, which would only be the seventh since the year 1800. Patriot Gold Group has the No Fee for Life IRA, where your IRA or 401k can be in physical gold and silver. And you may be eligible for the No Fee for Life IRA. So go ahead and give the folks at Patriot Gold Group a call to discuss physical gold and silver and the knowledge that Patriot Gold Group is Consumer Affairs top rated gold IRA dealer five years in a row from 2016 till present. Click the link in the description box below for more information. And now on with the video. And good afternoon. All right, well, I've been working in the backfield. We got two beehives up and I need to paint three more here. So just real simple, how to paint a beehive. I have a mentor who's helping me, but that knows way, way more. So it's actually his hives he's keeping out here so I can practice first. These three I'm painting right now are mine. I'm going to be putting in the back there. So let's take a look and see how you can uh, get up some beehives. Super simple. I'm just using exterior satin white, pure white. And I'll show you what I was told and saw some of the other guys in the bee club. The girls are real delicate when they're painting around the corners and where the uh, dovetail seams are. So learning from everybody and we'll see where it takes us. I am going to paint where pieces come together. I'm, I'm going to run a roller over this after I'm finished, but what I want to do is really start to soak this edge wood right here. Because if you're going to have any problems, if they're going to occur right here where the water's coming in, where any kind of connections are. So what I'll do is I'll probably hit this three or four times just to really try to get it to soak in. After the roller comes, that'll all disappear. But my main concern is this just right here. Because this is where most of your water rot will occur. So, trying to do it a couple, two, three times. And I'm not even gonna do this part here. Right now, what I'm focusing on are where the seams are coming together. Now, I'm only gonna do to the bottom right here Never do the inside, only uh, just do right to the bottom, and that's it, just this. And I'll come back even again after that, but I want it really thick on the edges here, almost almost where it's goopy thick at the, at the edge there, almost where it's kind of goopying, if there's such a word. I think people who paint know what I'm talking about. It gets a little goopy there. Now, this is the screen here. I'm not going to touch that. I'm going to have a bottom plate, bottom board on here as well. I uh, don't want the beetles coming in, but do not paint that. And again, it comes for the side. So you can actually see the gap right in here. So I'm going to want to try to fill that gap with the paint too, because any splashing of water that's going to come in, the water will sit right in there. And this being untreated wood, if you let this go, it's only going to last maybe three years. 
the, trying to fill the gap right in there. And it's going to take a couple coats, so I'm going to do super thick. And my whole point is to fill that gap. And that's where I'm going with that. It's And then coat number two will come along, and that should for sure really fill that up. What you want to do is make it almost incredibly thick, like toothpaste style in here. Because this is where you're going to get a lot of your moisture damage and moisture leakage in here. So it's better to really try to squeeze that in the cracks. And you can see how it's becoming... Uh, really almost incredible thick in there so I wish I could have it this thick all the way through but you could actually see it bubbling right there so if you look down in you can see the bubbles where the paints being absorbed into the wood and that's great there's another bubble there there's a few things anywhere I can start to cover up where there is an opening into the wood where water could get. Obviously water falls down, so as the water's running down, this is a super danger point because the water will come down and sit between this and something else that you're stacking on it, you know, whether it's the, if you're gonna put, if you're gonna stack two on top. But this, where this touches another box is gonna be where the moisture will sit and cause the rot, so. This outside, you're really not going to have much problem with. The problem points are going to be here and here. So, again, you don't want to really paint on the inside of the box. And that's the whole point of doing it, taking extra time, just let it thicken up, and then really trying to make sure that it, it soaks in. And I'll do the same exact thing right here with the... Uh, with the screws here, because the screws are known points as well for moisture to come in. So really trying to get an incredible thick around the screws, anything where you might see water coming in. And obviously this crack right here, you can already see that it's going to be a nuisance water-wise already. So I'm really going to dollop it on thick there and hope that it can create some sort of, I might even turn it over a little bit to try to use gravity to my advantage and put it in this way. You see I'm really dolloping it there, but get that would be out of here. So that's really what I'm trying to ob obtain in my objective for painting this so thick on the edges is really sealing it up the best I can against the elements here and there you go that's pretty pretty nice and thick and if I put a second coat on that uh, that should definitely be no pun intended be good enough and now that all the beehives are painted up gonna need to wait about seven to ten days of these drying continuously before I'd want to even consider putting a nook into them which is five frames which already has a queen and a colony established which you transplant into the box that'll be coming up in the next video after the paint dries but for now I wanted to take you to a couple barns that I keep passing that are close to where I live this building style is a long gone era just see how the logs have been notched and then laid on top of each other there's not a single nail involved in setting up the frame on this and I imagine the barn in the back there would have been used for tobacco drying. But now since everything's done in a factory, these barns have become disused. But what a nugget to find if you're going to purchase a piece of land. And a moment of zen as a couple of subscribers had written in and said, Hey, there's a lot of streams and rivers coming out of the Smoky Mountains. Do you ever go fly fishing?